Let's talk about slow speed control. Well, it is very, very essential that you should have fair idea about estimation of speed. That is, you should know when to reduce speed. Of course, instruments are very important and that can give idea what is the speed of the ship. But you can also not neglect the experience. So here we can see the total reliance on instrument is not a substitute for experience. Basically, you need to develop the feel. So now let us discuss some more uh, information about speed. Basically, many casualties have taken place due to excessive speed. When you are berthing the ship or unberthing, things may happen too quickly to handle. I can say that fast pilot is not necessarily a good pilot. A fast pilot could be a just lucky pilot. Well, it is almost impossible to give exact figures to control speed due to variable factors such as types of ship, tonnage, shaft horsepower, wind and tide. Now as a, a general guide, of course it is not a hard and fast rule, but uh, generally the vessel less than 40,000 ton dead weight, the speed is reduced very quickly. And for vessels more than 40,000 ton dead weight, they have large momentum and speed must be brought firmly under control at greater distance. So, if the speed is too slow, that speed can always be easily overcome by increasing RPM. However, if the speed is too high, then it is difficult to reduce in short distance and a ship may not remain under control. Basically, a vessel may have, uh, basically a vessel may suffer loss of control. So here, let's have example that vessel is 60,000 ton dead weight and it is having fixed pitch right-handed propeller. Of course, the vessel is diesel powered and is having conventional radar. So let's study uh, this diagram. Here, this is the berth and uh, uh, this is the movement of vessel and the distance of this vessel from here is around 10 cable. So these distances are in cable. So here the vessel is doing 6 knot and uh, the engine is on slow ahead. Then when it is around 7 cable, engine is put on dead slow ahead and the speed is uh, 4 knot. Then when it is about uh, half a mile or 5 cable, the engine is uh, stopped. Now the vessel is doing 3 knot. Well, now the distance remaining is just 5 cable. We need to stop the ship. Then the vessel is put slow astern, then half astern and if required full astern so that vessel is stopped here. Well, if you see when the vessel is put astern, uh, the vessel, the bow is going to swing to starboard. So if you see carefully, the control is lost for a long period. So in this long period, you are at the mercy of transverse thrust, wind, tide, bank effect or shallow water effect. So basically, this is a hit or miss situation. Now, let us look another scenario. So here, the vessel is around 10 cable doing 3 knot, engine is stopped. Well, when it is 8 cable, a short kick is given and then when it around 6 cable, engine is stopped or a small kick is ahead, a dead slow ahead. So basically, you are moving the ship with short kick ahead method. Now, when you are around half a cable, uh, a speed uh, could be around 1 knot and a small kick is given if required. 
a short period of western power is also given and the vessel is slowly approaching and comes to the berth here. So, if we see carefully the eastern uh, moment is given from this period to this period. So, control is lost for a small period and this is the desired method. So, basically let us talk about slow speed control. So, when the vessel is about half a mile from the berth, engine is stopped and excessive headway is reduced. So, basically allow plenty of time to adjust the ship's approach and positioning for the berth. So, in this scenario, the biggest worry is effectiveness of radar at very slow speed. So, here comes the solution and the solution is kick ahead and radar angle. Well, let me explain this. Put the wheel first on hard over and then give a kick. All right. So, what happens? The en this ensures maximum turning effect and uh, the speed, uh, it puts also a brake on the residual speed. When you put the wheel on hard over and give the kick, most of the effect, most of the force is used in turning the ship and uh, it does not increase the speed of the ship. However, if you apply less helm, say 15 or 20 degree, then you are doing at the cost of increasing the forward speed. So, it is much desirable that you put the wheel hard over. Additionally, you need to stop the engine before rudder is put amidship. So, now let us discuss the kick ahead duration. What should be the duration? Well, the kick should be as short as possible. So, if you are having the prolonged kick, that means violent shear and unwanted buildup of a speed will take place. So, as soon as the arc beam reaches the maximum, power must be taken off. Well, uh, let us talk about kick ahead power. It is very, very difficult to quantify amount of power for kick ahead. Well, it depends on the size of the ship and it also depends on the need of ship handler at that particular time. Of course, you need to appreciate the ratio of shaft horsepower to dead weight from ship to ship. So, here uh, this is the type of the ship, cargo, tanker, VLCC container. Well, it is just to give you a fair idea and this is the dead weight and of course, this is shaft horsepower. So, for a general cargo vessel of 20,000 ton dead weight, you have 17,000. However, for a tanker which is 60,000 ton and you have only 15,000. And for VLCC where the dead weight is 250,000 ton dead weight, the shaft power is hardly 31,000. Well, in comparison, the container ship which is 29,000 ton dead weight, the shaft horsepower is 26,200. Well, slow ahead may be very effective on a smaller ship, but extremely inadequate for a VLCC or any large vessel. In such case, you need to give half or even full power may be needed to achieve the result. Well, some ships have generally uh, like containers have 6 to 8 nodes on that slow speed.